Okay, I need to get the excitement out, first of all. <laughs> so this has been a long time coming, and finally, here we are. And if you've seen this, you're probably wondering, what have we been working on? This is what we've been working on. And this was released, honestly, by the Lord, and to be privileged to do this on this platform. So I'm very grateful, first of all, for Prophet Lovi allowing us, allowing me, allowing all of us yes! to have the opportunity to do this on this platform, it is such an honor and a privilege to be a blessing to the people of God and just everything that this house is doing to be an extension of that, I cannot even tell you how honored I feel and how humbled it is. So I'm so excited to welcome you all to this journey of Live Yielded. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, so it's gonna be great. It's going to be empowering, it's going to be enlightening, it's going to be transformational, and it's really going to be heart challenging uh, for us to just discover the things that God has for us. And we're going to get into even just the vision and how this came about. So come on, let's take it. All right, so Live Yielded. I guess let me just give you my own personal little history of it. We'll get more into it as we walk on this together. But So I thought it was going to be an audio podcast, right? And I'm like, okay, I feel like the Lord is releasing something I've desired, and I was feeling that pull, like, okay, let's do something, just kind of teach a little bit, enlighten a little bit, just in a different way, just to be a blessing to people. And so I come up to Papa Lo, and like, okay, great, when you're ready to do it, like, we're going to put it on my platform. I said, what? I want us to do an audio podcast. Like, and, but that was very challenging instantly in that moment. I said, wow, God, really, you can give us something, and we can see the small picture and never imagine how big, because I don't know how, but it downloaded immediately. Because I was like, okay, this is not just me getting to sit with my phone and the mic and just record and put it out there. This is me having to show up and <laughs> be on this amazing platform of it and really be a blessing to the people. And I was like, okay, God, well, if this is what you're saying, it's going to be great. Let's do it. Um, but even as he began to show me what Live Yielded was, and just as we kick off this, this podcast, this show, this space, whatever you want to call it, we're going to go into a seven-part series. I was led to start off that way, and for the next seven episodes, we're just going to hit on seven different areas about yielding or seven different areas where we can yield to the Lord and what that looks like. And so we're going to start that today. Amen. And so the very first thing we're going to talk about is yielding yourself, okay? Yielding yourself. So just live yielded, first of all. The idea of yielding, right? the thing that comes to me immediately is I think of when we're driving, you know, and you have to yield. And so automatically, and I went to the dictionary just like, okay, God, what exactly is this? Just even as I understood more of what he was saying. But to yield is basically to step out of the way so that you let somebody else take the lead. Or it goes deeper in saying letting go of doing something your way so that you can adopt a different way of doing it. And in another way that we can say that as believers is the famous word that is not always so easy is surrender. And so to live yielded is to surrender. To yield is to surrender. So living a yielded life is basically living a surrendered life. But what does that look like? And I think ultimately, honestly, for all of us, if we're honest with ourselves, the journey of Christianity or our walk with God is the ultimate journey of surrender. Each and every single day, us surrendering. Each and every single day, us yielding to say, okay, not my emotion, not my thought, not my desire, not how I perceive this thing will be, but I surrender to your way. So it's a constant saying, God, your way. 
constantly, okay, how do you want to do this? Okay, your way. How do you want to go about that? Okay, God, your way. So we find ourselves having to constantly yield like that. And so I wanted to start with that, yielding yourself, because we are the ones that God is after. I think when we talk about surrender, we all talk about, okay, surrendering my dreams or surrendering my family or surrendering my finances or surrendering my career, is that we think very external, but really all that becomes the side effect of whether or not you're surrendered already. And so it really starts with you. And so when you've already laid everything out, it's like saying, God, me and everything that I have, I'm already yours. So that encompasses my career, that encompasses my family, that encompasses my finances, that encompasses my dreams and desires, because that's all part of me. So those things are not separate. And I think that's where we kind of struggle sometimes is because we've separated. It's like, yes, me and then my career. Yes, me and then my relationship. Yes, me and then my desires. Yes, me and my job or whatever it is that I have to do. And not realizing, even though we say it, but it's like we are not fully embracing those two or fully merging those two realities that you are connected to everything else that is a part of your life. So... As we go a little deeper, I wanted to read this verse in NLT because we've heard this a lot, probably in King James, but I'm going to read it for you today in the NLT. And this is Romans 12, 1 to 2. And he says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. So let your bodies be a living and holy sacrifice. Then verse 2 in NLT, he says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And so even breaking it down further when we talk about our thought or our mind and the way we think that then ultimately changes who we are, we are tripart beings, right? Uh, body, soul, and spirit. And when you think of the effect externally, like all those things that we we're just talking about, it's all the external things like my body in my career, my body being present in my job, how my body interacts in relationships. It's like that external thing. And then you come behind that layer to the soul, but then there's that third layer of the spirit. And so as I was going deeper into this, it's realizing very fundamental. This is very, very fundamental, but your yielding starts from the spirit and then that's what influences your soul and then that's what influences the body. And so when you haven't really locked in that first part, we struggle on the third part. And so a lot of us have been trying to come at it from the third part. And I'm speaking personally just because of how I know this journey has been. And some of the areas where I was like, God, what? You want me to give this up? And that's how you think of it is like giving something up. It's like we think we are losing something or letting something go for God to be pleased. It's like even that mindset itself is warped. It's like, oh, I have to give up school because I have to do this thing. It's like I have to give up something for this thing that God wants versus thinking God wants me to gain something else rather than this thing that I thought was good. We don't think of it that way. And so a lot of us, we go about, even myself, I'm sure a lot of us in this room will say, okay, yeah, this thing I wanted to do by God did not allow me to do that. It's like it was a loss yeah. for me yeah. not to do that for this other thing that God wanted me to do in that particular season. And even though in retrospect, when we've walked through it, we see the benefit of it, but in the back of our minds, it's still like, oh, I lost something there because I didn't get to do that thing when I wanted to do it. And it wasn't a loss. It wasn't a loss. And so when it comes to yielding yourself, it's really that fundamental thing. What is it that when we receive Christ in our lives, what, what are we saying? Like him being our Lord and Savior, what does that mean? And recently, Papa Lo was doing a series and he was talking about um, maximizing the grace that you carry, right? And he was talking about you carrying that thing on the inside, but when you don't even know what you carry, other people will use it. And so when I was sitting in that, and because I already knew like we we're working on this live yielded thing, so my mind was just kind of filtering everything through that lens 
of living yielded. And God began to challenge me. Like, you have to recognize who you are in the sense of what you bring to the table and in the sense of you being a gift to the world. Just as we say Christ was a gift to, to humanity, we as followers of Christ and as being born again, we are a gift to humanity. I don't know how many of us actually think that way of ourselves. You know, it almost sounds vain for you to think of yourself as being a gift to humanity. You know, people think, speak of that in whatever context. They actually will say, oh, this person thinks he's a gift to mankind. Like we, we talk down on that. Yes. But in the place where God has called us, we actually are a gift Amen. to the earth. Yes. We actually are a gift to the people connected to us. We're a gift. It goes even so much further where he says, your days, like I not only did that number your days, but he says, I completed the book of your days before I created you. So it's that there is something in the earth that you are literally designed to come and solve, to come and take care of, to come and handle before you return back to the Father. And so it's not vain for you to begin to think that way, but what, we, what that will do and what it has done for me is it immediately causes you to level up in the sense that you automatically now cannot stay confined to thinking only of yourself. Yes. Because if I'm a gift to the earth and I'm an extension of God to the earth, then who is it that I'm called to impact? What is it that I'm called to impact? What is it that I'm called to change? You cannot stay small anymore. You cannot stay small anymore. And so that's where yielding ourselves is. It's God is so generational. Like he's so far-sighted. Like he sees beyond. He is eternal. So even saying that, our minds can't even comprehend that. But even just thinking of how far God thinks and sees. Like generations past, generations to come, how you fit in the middle of all of that like a puzzle. God intended all that on purpose. And so... Now that we sit here, it's like, okay, God, like, what part do I have to play? And where you're saying, okay, living a yielded life, you're calling me to yield myself. So there's really a part of me that I don't even know is in me that you are requiring me to yield. And that's where this journey of surrender is. That's where this thing of the daily, because every time we're with him, he's constantly unveiling more of himself not only to us, but more of himself that is in us. And so as we see more of him in us, and as we see more of ourselves in his light, then that also becomes another part that you have to yield and surrender. You say, oh man, okay, this is there too. Okay, God, I give it to you. Okay, God, this is there too. Okay, God, it's available for you. This is there too. Okay, you can use it too. Yeah. Yielding all of those things to him. And another verse that I want us to look at, there's three verses we're going to look at today, um, just in this little portion of what we're talking about. This is Galatians 5, 16 to 18. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. This verse is so simple, but it's so powerful. It's like one plus one equals to two, and it makes sense. Yeah. You know? If you said one plus one, you want to add five in the equation, okay, where did that come from? And that's literally what the scripture is saying. He's saying, if you're led by the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it sounds so simple, but now try being led by the spirit. <laughs> right? Try being led by the spirit. And that's where we find this wrestling happening. It says, but I've given you the key. Like, I've given you the solution. I've given you how you win this thing. Be led by the spirit. And so when you start thinking of that daily walk, okay, God, like, how do I yield myself completely to the point that even my thoughts, I will know that these are the thoughts of God because I'm so yielded yes. to you. Wherever I find myself, I will have the assurance that it's, it's the will of God for my life in that moment because he is the one that is leading me in that place every single time. And so being yielded to be led by the spirit, remember how we said spirit, soul, body, living from the inside out. So my challenge to all of us really as we begin this journey and even as we've been on this journey or whatever it is that we've been doing, is how 
how do we recognize, how do we recognize what God is doing in our lives and align ourselves with it so that we can be who he has called us to be? Like, even just in this, me being here, honestly, I, I cannot help but see the hand of God in where we see so limited, like so, so tunnel vision sometimes, like we don't even understand the full picture, but God is dealing like with 10 million things at the same time. And when it all unfolds, you're like, oh my gosh, like this fits so perfect. This is what you were doing. And I was over here battling with you and wrestling with you. Like this is what you had in mind. And you almost want to be like, God, you should have just told me. And he's like, but I was trying to tell you. But you were resisting. And the things that resist, the things that we are fighting against, and that's really where this yielding yourself is so key because he said you offer yourself as a living sacrifice. It's everything that's inside of you that you're considering, that you're thinking of, that you're desiring. And all those things, never thinking that anything that God asks you to lay down, that he doesn't have anything better for you. That's the first thing. We think our plans for ourselves are the best. We speak of God. We know Jeremiah 29, 11, like we'll quote it. I know the plans I have for you. We'll say all of that. But in all of that, we have a vision and an image of what it should look like. Yes. And we think that's the best. And I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, man, God will tell you, I'm taking you from point A to B. And you're like, oh, okay, great. We're going from point A to B. But he was like, I'm going to take you from A to K to X to L to F to C. And then we're going to get back to B. And you're like, wait, why did we have to go to all these places if we were just ending here? But by the time you come to that B, there's things that he had you learn and things that he needed you to bring into that B that you wouldn't have been able to bring if you just went from point A to point B. And so that's where yielding yourself even all the things that it is, our timeline, our ideas of things, our, the, the dreams our parents have for us, you know, the dreams our families have for us. Being able to say, you know what, yes, it's great, you want the best for me, no problem, I don't hate you for it, I appreciate it, but God's plan is what I desire more than that. Yes. And being able to follow through, and it will cost you, absolutely. It will cost you, it will. But even the joy that you find in that is really a measure of your surrender. What I've come to discover, we talk about uh, peace of mind and just living life like with no stress and unburdening. There is no peaceful life more than a surrendered life. There is more joyful, no more joyful life than a surrendered life. Because when you have completely yielded, there's a way that literally all those precious God will carry. It's like nobody can put anything on you. It's like, oh, okay, that's what you think. Good for you. Like, but I'm on somebody else's clock. I'm on God's time. Like, I'm on his agenda. Like, you don't even get to make me feel bad for something that doesn't look the way that you thought it was. But it begins with us. It's only when we've overcome that battle with ourselves that then what anybody else can try and put on you will not stay. But a lot of times we have not resolved that within ourselves. And so even when now the enemy will use those voices because he can recognize the weakness, the devil is, what is he? He's just, uh, he takes advantage. That's all he does. Like any crack you give him, any crack he sees, like, yeah, I'm going to pummel that all the way to the ground. And so when there's those weaknesses that we have, he wants to use that against us. Whereas if we're strong enough, something I read a long time ago that I've kind of held on to as my own uh, what should I say, like a mantra, so to speak, is disarm the enemy of the weapon of your weakness by surrendering that weakness to God. Because your weakness in the hand of the devil is a weapon that he will literally use to destroy you. But when you take that weakness and give it to God, like that's not a weapon he can use anymore because he cannot take anything from the hand of God. And so when you can recognize that, okay, this is a weakness, this is something that I'm struggling with, this is something that I have, and you can take that to God, you have disarmed the enemy of being able to use the weapon of your weakness against you. That's so and that's one of the ways that God keeps us in his presence. That's one of the ways that God keeps us uh, humble and depending on him and surrendered to him. Yes. Yielded, yes. staying yielded, because ultimately that's the key to our victory, right? Yes. Yes. There's no other way. There's no other way. And so even when we talk about pleasing God, it's really, it gets heavy because you realize you can do everything, but when you're not surrendered, God is not even pleased with you. And that's where 
Even this Romans 12, 1, he says, that's the only worship that is acceptable to him. Yes. Not what you think it should look like. Not what you think it ought to be. And that's where even when we come to serving, uh, serving in ministry or serving God, it becomes a very dangerous place to be because many times we have gauged it or measured it based on what we see somebody else's service to God is. Yeah. And so those become our examples. And that's good. Yes, it should be our example. We have leaders. We follow uh, mentors. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Absolutely. But it becomes dangerous in that place where we begin to cap God at that. Like, God cannot do more than that. Like, God cannot do beyond what you see. Yes. And so you, it's like God is saying, okay, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, I desire to do that to you, and I desire to reveal that to you so that you would actually know it. But there is a way that our lens become literally the hindrance and the marker that we have set. It's like a line that I've drawn because I've decided that this is the height that it can go. It cannot go above this. It cannot be more than this. And so then we take that same standard and we apply it to every other area of our lives. I'm successful in my job or career when I'm making so-and-so figures. I'm successful when I'm able to have this title or position. That's what success looks like. Or in whatever, oh, I'm in music, okay, great. I'm only successful if I have Grammys or I've been nominated for awards. Like, I'm only successful if I've... Uh, if I have platinum records and you move it to whatever else, like I'm successful in whatever other area I have based on the accolades that we see. And whereas God is like, there's so much more impact to make in this world. Why are you limiting me to this little place that humanity has decided to highlight or box? So you also box yourself in. And God is like, but I want to do more with you. I want to take you further than that. I want to do beyond that. But we have not even allowed, our, allowed ourselves to even consider the possibility of that. And God is saying, yield yourself. Just yield yourself. Literally, when you're yielded, think of yourself as a puppet. That does nothing except the puppeteer moves the strings. That is literally, ultimately, how we are to be in the hand of God. And it's hard because we're very much alive. But it's saying, that's why I want you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. That's really what it is. Like to get to the point of that spiritual sensitivity that you say, okay, God, I'm not taking this step if it's not you. But then you find that you fall into a place of communion. And Papa Lo has been the best challenge for me in this, honestly, where I don't know about you guys, at least for me, like I'm just speaking for myself, you know. There is the place where dependency on the Holy Spirit has looked like you praying visibly yes. has looked like you actively reading your yes. word yes. that's what it looks like you depending on the yes. holy spirit but then there's another level where you're walking with him it's, i don't need to be praying in that time like it's like i'm walking with you yes. we're in this together so i am depending on you even in this moment right now i don't need to say okay hold on a minute i'll come back and give you an answer let me go to the closet first and pray real quick get an answer and then i'll come back and tell you okay this is what the lord said because i've come to another level of that yes. And I always used to ask myself, if we are to give our whole life to God, like think of even the disciplines we put, and it's great, yes, pray, yes, read your word. But if you're going to hold that as, oh, I woke up in the morning and this is my devotional time and I had my time with God, okay, now I'm going to my job and then now I'm spending time with family. Just look at the way our lives are structured, yeah. first of all. So basically God is two hours of your day, if that, maybe even 30 minutes of your day. So that can't really be what God was saying. Yes. That can't be what God was saying. It can't be that, okay, it's just this little time with me and that's you and me doing life together? Absolutely not. Not if it's supposed to be with you in your job. Not if it's supposed to be with you with your children. Not if it's supposed to be with you in everything that you do. That means there's another dimension of that, that I literally pray without ceasing. Not because I'm over here like praying blah, 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 blah without ceasing. But I am in communion without ceasing. I am in fellowship without ceasing. I am with him consistently. That's what praying without ceasing is. Because what, what is prayer? Communication with the Father. He speaks and I speak. The reason we miss it is because the prayer for us is like, okay, 
oh, father, here I am, da-da-da-da-da. Like, okay, then I'm waiting. Okay, sometimes we don't even let him speak back to us. It's like, okay, I had my prayer time. How? That was one-way communication. Can you imagine picking up the phone to call somebody and you just talk, talk, talk? Okay, cool. It was great talking to you. No, it, you did not talk to me. Maybe you needed to vent and you needed to let something out, but that was, that was not a conversation. But that's what we do. Yes. And we say, okay, that was my prayer time. Ooh, but prayer is communication. Yeah. Prayer is fellowship. Yes. I promise you, even test yourself. You'll see when we're talking about how the flesh then follows the body, like we're talking about spirit, soul, to body. If you even sit yourself and say, God, I'm going to come and pray today, even in that spiritual discipline and say, I'm not getting up until God speaks back to me, you'll see how restless your flesh is. Ooh. You'll see how many of us have not actually prayed in the way that we think we pray. To say, God, let me talk, let me say what I have to say. Now let me wait and hear what he has to say. Mm. Your flair would be like, okay, your thoughts will start running left, right? <laughs> like, okay, what do I do? Okay, we're done. Okay, I'm out of time. I have something else to do right now. Okay, God, you're not talking. We have not finished the task even in the place of prayer that we say. But God is saying, it's not just that. I don't want you to limit me to your devotional time. And then sometimes you miss it. So, and this is what I always used to say. So if I miss, let's say I woke up late, right? And I didn't get to do my devotional. So is, I missed my time with God for the day. That's it. Like me and God are not <laughs> spending time together today. Like, so till tomorrow again, like, how does this work? But he said, no, I want you to do life with me. Like, let's walk together. Like, let's live life together and that's what it is like when you have somebody that you love even just your best friend not even a romantic relationship like you guys are texting each other throughout the day it's like oh my gosh this happened. it's like it's that consistent communication and that's what God is wanting for us yielding ourselves that's what that looks like so it's not even I'm not doing anything until God moves it's that I'm doing everything knowing he's with me in everything that I'm doing so that if at any point there is something that I should not be doing, like we are so in tune that the check, I'll listen to it. Yes. I'll listen to it. And there's a scripture that encourages me for that. Um, Philippians 3. I want to read that for you guys real quick. Yes, Philippians chapter 3. Let me go back to King James for this one. Uh, verse 15. He says, Philippians 3.15, he says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And what is the mind that he was talking about? It was the mind of uh, pressing on towards the prize of the high calling, like just desiring to be apprehended by that which has apprehended me, wanting more of Jesus. He says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Then he says, And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. And so this... I remember when God just showed, I said, wait, hold on. So I don't need to worry. So then that made me even more desiring to be like, Holy Spirit, I really want to hear you because I don't want to miss it. Because you're saying that if I'm ever doing anything, that is not your will, you're going to tell me. And so that means I have to be able to hear that check and immediately obey, and immediately adjust, immediately realign whatever it is that's going on. And so now it's no longer oh, okay, God, like, what are we doing right now? Okay, do I move? Do I not move? Okay, God, what's happening? No, it's me walking with him. It's me doing and trusting that if anything, at any point, he will speak. And so that means I'm living life with my ears open. I'm living life with my eyes open. I'm living life sensitive to him. And that's what living yielded is. It's being open that at any time, even now, God can speak and I am open to hearing him speak even now. I'm not saying, God, in this moment, okay, you're, you can't speak right now. Let me finish this first and then you're free to speak. No, I'm saying even now, God, anything you want to say, I'm open to that. Anything you want to shift, I'm open to that. Yes, this is the career I love, but you want to change it? Okay, cool. I don't know how it's going to go, but I trust that you have something. But I trust that you know what you're doing, so I just need to follow. You're never going to lead me astray, so let's go for it. That's what it is. And people sometimes will not understand. Real quick, I have a few minutes um, before we finish this for today. But I'm, I'm remembering even how the Lord led me to come to L.A. And it was such a, it was so intense and it was a lesson that I'll never forget because I remember this scripture that I'm reading for you guys right now. But the time that the check started coming, I was just like, no, that can be God. I was like, wait, live how? And the timing was so off 
if you ask me, as far as human time goes. Because at that time, um, I have my fashion business and stuff that I'm doing, right? So I just got this storefront, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this has been my dream. Like, I want a storefront. And it's right by the freeway, like prime location. I'm telling you, like, my business is about to take off. I'm like, let's go, okay? Like, we've been working, we've been putting in the work, like, this is it. I'm about to see the fruit of this. So when God starts saying that, I was like, no, 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 no. It can't be. Like, what? How? Like, I have a shop, I have clients, I have fittings, I have all these things. I'm like, no, this can be. And then ministry, and then, no, God, maybe I'm not hearing right. But then it got like, and that's the beauty of God that I'm learning more and more. God is honestly more committed to his purpose, being fulfilled even more than we are. Yeah. We think we are about purpose and we think <laughs> we want to fulfill purpose. We think we're going to, nah, God is not going to let his purpose not be fulfilled. He doesn't care if he has to drag you, yeah. whatever. He's like, I will fulfill my purpose. Yeah. Like, even you don't get to stand in the way of that. Yeah. And I became so uncomfortable. I can't even tell you how, why I was uncomfortable. Anybody else would be like, Benny, what's wrong? Like, I was so uncomfortable. And of course, prior to this, Papa Lo, he's known. And it's just like, you need to come to LA. I'm like, yeah, I'll come visit. He's like, you need to come to LA. I was like, yeah, I'll come visit. But then at this point, it's like, I just knew I needed to be here. Like, it didn't even make sense. And so I'm talking to some of my friends. I'm like, I need to be in LA. I don't even know why. And that's what I was telling them. Like, I don't know why, but it's like, I have to be in LA, like right now. And the way it happened, I was like, get in your car and go. Literally, I drove. I was just like, okay, cool, I'm going to drive. And it was last minute, too, because I did not plan to drive my car. And so at the very last minute, I was like, no, take your car. I'm like, why am I? So it's like you're doing all these things that even in your mind, it's like, why am I doing this? Like, this does not make any sense. Long story short, I'm here thinking I'm coming for a visit. But as I start driving, he's already telling me, like, Holy Spirit showed me, you're not going to be going back to Houston as quickly as you thought you were. So I'm just like, mm, okay. Then I'm talking to Papa Lo. He's like, oh, you have to give yourself time when you come, okay? Like, don't be in a rush to go back. I'm like, what is going on right now? But it was literally, I had to be out for God. And I saw in that moment, it was like when God shows you a mirror and you see that you yourself have been the hindrance in that space of the thing that you say, God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to move here, God. It's like he literally held the mirror up and said, it's you. You were not listening to me when I was talking to you. It's one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. And long story short, like what was a visit was a move, literally. And here we are. But all that to say, in this place of yielding yourself, it's so important that it's day to day. Because I am reminded of Abraham, and I wanted to go into that, but we will talk about this next time. And Abraham... The Bible says something very interesting about Abraham when God came to call him out. In Genesis 12, he says, God came, come out of your kindred, come out of your father, come out of all these people to a land I'm going to show you. But when you study that, you realize that that instruction had not been given to Abraham first. It was given to his father. But his father got comfortable and settled in that place where Abraham then has to be called out of. And in this journey, these places and paths, like me in Houston was great, like for that duration and season of what God needed me to learn in that place and the things that I grew in, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm so grateful for it. But I got comfortable. Mm. That when God was now saying, hey, it's time to shift, I didn't hear it, because I'm like, why are we shifting out of this place? Like, this is a good place. <laughs> like, why are we shifting? Mm. And so you have to be careful. Yielding yourself daily to say, God, like, I'm never going to hold on to anything that I think more than what you want to do. That I'm willing to let anything go at any time because I never lose. Like, you already have to make that up in your mind. You never lose. Even if it looks like you're losing. Like, let that sink in. With God, you are never losing anything. So that you can let go of whatever he's telling you to let go. And you can be open for whatever he's giving you. You're never losing. Settle that so that you can flow with God when he's telling you to flow. And you'll find that literally the most peaceful life, I'm telling you, the most joyful life is the surrendered life. And you'll never regret it. Amen? Amen. All right. All right, everybody, you know what time it is. Time for Ask Auntie Benz. So... <laughs> All right.
guys, so we're going to take questions. All right, guys. So our special guest today, Ms. Shanice. Hey. <laughs> hey. I, okay, I want to give a disclaimer, okay? For those of you that watch Revealed, I want to reintroduce her as the Black Queen. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Live Yielded. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Yes. So what's your question? My question, while you were teaching, you made a statement saying that our lens can be the hindrance um, of what God wants to do with us, especially when we're comparing ourselves to other yeah. people and their journeys, or if we see them elevating before us. So if you could give us a couple practical stuff because it's easy to say just oh you need to pray or just you need to surrender yeah. that to God or you need to yield that to God but like a couple of practical steps that someone can do if they find themselves in that place you need to pray you need to surrender <laughs> <that to God. laughs> no but really though it's that's really it practically would be seeking God specifically I'd say ask God to show you his plan for you mm -hmm. And I think in anything in life, actually, whether it's that place of comparison or whenever we find ourselves in our own, um, in our own head too much or just even depression or all those things that come, I've discovered it's usually because of a lack of vision. Mm. And so when you have no vision, it becomes very, it's like you get stagnant in that. And so whether it's you lacking vision for yourself in relation to yourself or you lacking vision for yourself in relation to what you see other people yes. having. And so really praying for vision. I would say ask God to show you and remind you who you are. Because once you can have a reminder of your identity in him, mm -hmm. that will awaken that purpose that he has for you. And so you find the fuel and the strength to pursue that regardless of what anybody else is doing. Because when we lose ourselves, that's when we will fall into what somebody else offers versus the identity that God has so that I can lock that in and say, okay, this is what he has for me. So really vision, vision, vision. Asking God, yes, pray, yes. but surrender like as far as asking God to give you vision. Like show me who I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Woo! So we have two more questions here from our audience today. And so the first one, in what moment did you realize that this is what it looks like to yield? Was there a moment in your life when you said, this is what you mean, Lord? Honestly, it's the perfect question, piggybacking of what Shanice just asked, because that moment was when I realized I didn't have the pressure of what people wanted anymore. Mm. And so it was in the moment of God leading me in a different path. And it was really weird, too, because I knew I wanted what God wanted for me, but it didn't look like what other people had and that was throwing me off. Mm. And so at the time, I, it's very specific because I remember my leader at the time would constantly encourage me and say, Benny, stop comparing yourself to other people. What God has for you is different. And it's like I had to hear that over and over again, but it wasn't until like God l locked that in, in me. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment when I was like, oh, okay. And so at that point is when I could actually genuinely celebrate other people I could genuinely be happy for what they were achieving in their life and what God was doing in them without feeling like I was missing out on anything or that I was lacking, but I had fully accepted that my journey was different. Yeah. And so I had full peace. And so sometimes you even hear people telling you, oh, celebrate what other people are celebrating um, or be happy for other people, your time will come. People say this, but when you don't really understand what they're saying, sometimes you'll think it's just surface level. No, but it's very real because you can literally be happy for somebody else in a place where it feels like, man, I wish that was me, but you've kind of let go of the, I wish that was me. Mm. You can just be happy for them yes. while you're fully present with what God is doing in you. And that's when I knew for me yeah. that, man, okay, I've accepted yes. what God is doing in my life and I'm at peace with it. So yes. that was, yeah, that was the moment. So uh, last question for today. Can you share an experience with us of a moment while walking in the Holy Spirit produced a greater result than you originally expected moving to Los Angeles, okay? <laughs> no, seriously, moving to LA has been one of the biggest blessings of my life. Um, and I think everything we talked about today kind of builds on that because 
again, my past or where I was looked really good. It wasn't the best, you know? There were still areas where I was like, okay, I can work on this, or this could be better, or this situation could be a little different. But I kind of settled in that. I was like, I can see how we can grow from here. But where God would completely want to shift me in a completely different place and want to reveal himself to me in ways that I couldn't have even fathomed, that, that's definitely been one of the biggest blessings. So this would be a prime example, I'll say, of walking with the Holy Spirit, that the result was so much greater than what I imagined. Amen. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Woo! Amen. Okay. So thank you, Shanice. Thank you, Black Queen. <laughs> thanks for being here. Yes. And thanks for the questions. I hope this helped you guys. So, Woo! so and if you do want to send questions, follow us on social media and definitely send in DMs or check out the stories so you never know your question might be asked on the next show. Woo!